Hey friends, uh, good, way, good evening to us in this video. In this video, we're going to see a very, very important topic. The Q3 results of uh, Suzu and Aditya Slim, I mean, come, <coughs> just mean come. And we're just going to see about it, guys. So before going to this video, three important things. First is that this video may be a long video. I need your focus to listen this video fully because if you are Suzanne and the shareholders, then listen this video fully, guys, because it is very, very important. I don't know how we can change you, your way of thinking on Suzanne Energy Limited. And second thing is that share this video with your friends who are holding the share and also who are thinking to buy the shares. And third thing is that if you like this video, then make sure you click the subscribe button, guys. So without wasting any time, the first important thing is that the quarter third result has come for Suzanne Energy Limited. And the first point we want to show is this guys and they are given the water milestones achieved. So if you see guys 39% of market share is with it and they have the largest fleet under maintenance 12.5 GW means gigawatt of power and second largest company in India power sector I mean though in this OM OEM sectors it is the second largest guys and second thing we want to see is that how will it be continued and they are saying this from FY21 they are estimating it, is, it can be around 5 gigawatt which means a renewable energy sector share which, which is showing this much of potentiality is very very good and what they have given is we can going to see this all guys I mean three important things financial performance and debt over, over you so the first financial performance and this quarter third results I will zoom in so that you can see it clearly guys and the first thing is that they are given their net revenue is coming around 651, 654 crores. So if we compare to previous quarter, it is around 1091 crores. That means a decrease in revenue, but it is already maintaining a profit margin percentage of 41%. So gross profit is around 270 crores. And also you should note this important thing is that the EBITDA is around 92 crores loss. The main reason was involved in here was the finance cost and as you know guys and you can see here the net finance cost is around 415 crores and which had made this share to post a loss of 663 crore of loss. Not only that guys due to exchange loss, exchange loss means currency, foreign currency fluctuation loss is around 77 crore guys. I don't know what made them to lose this much of amount in currency fluctuations and the net loss is coming around 737 crore loss so people in this second you will think oh my god i have invested all money is gone what to do now they are posting loss whether my share will increase or go down the next important factor is going to come which will blow your mind because we were amazed to see what they are given guys and as you can see here this is a net report of profit to the to the shareholders for the nine months. They have this also loss, but they have given a stable service revenue. They have been growing and they have posted a very very important news here. And the next thing is that this is the main thing, guys. If you say this company's debt resolution plan, this news will do a lot to you because their value of order book order book around four thousand three hundred ninety nine crore. That means the amount of process they want to complete or the book when they hand in his 4400 crore. And the next thing you should notice that all from is and also they having other orders guys. And also you should note that the next thing is the debt overview. So guys this is the actual debt overview you want to see here because the rupee debt is around 11,463 crores. I mean the banks, all things. And FCC means foreign currency convertible bonds is now around 1,263 crores. And other foreign exchange debt is around 357 crores. Which means the gross debt is coming around 13,000 crores. And on the net basis, it is 12,906 crores. So the total debt is coming around 12,906 crores. So the resolution plan, this is a very, very important factor, guys. Please, please see this carefully because this news is really, very important. We have, we want to say this news clearly to, clearly to you guys. And they have said here, 
We have continued to work on the resolution plan, focus on government wind energy, medium to long term outlook on it and also the steps taken. This is very, very important to zoom in so that you can see it clearly. And as you can see here guys, lenders have entered into a intercreditor agreement ICA under the Reserve Bank of India's framework which has expired on January 7, 2020. So this intercreditor agreement is that before going to NCLT process, this, agree, uh, this creditors will have agreement with themselves regarding this. But it has expired on January 7. But you should know the main factor that the agreement they have extended to 30th April 2020, which means the lenders are having a hope in this company. Without any hope, why the lenders should increase their period and ICA to uh, April 30, 2020 guys, all, almost from January to April they have increased and the next is that company has submitted restructuring plan to achieve a sustainable debt levels. The proposed restructuring plan is controlled by lender super point. This is the point I want you people to see because you should read it guys. Company has submitted restructuring plan to achieve a sustainable debt levels. The proposed restructuring plan is under consideration because it is on the lender side in order to give approval to the plan or not. The next thing is that company is also in discussion with the FCB holders for settlement of their borrowing. So this is the main thing you should note guys. And also the main thing or another main thing is that they are given that their tariff is also increasing and they are growing good guys. And people if you ask me, yes guys it is a bad result. If you, if you ask me if it is a bad result because of the main reason of the debt plan but if you come out of this debt i think they are able to progress a 40 percent margin in the gross profit margin i think if the debt restructure plan is going to get get completed successfully i think it should give a boost to susan energy shareholders because if it comes to, if this company goes to the nclt process i think a lot of shareholders would lose their money because of capital reduction process and so on so if you see guys, April 30, 2020 is the last date. So now February, March, April, two months are there. We hope the best because I think the lenders are very much clear because if you see any other companies is under insolvency process, that company would not be a market leader or not. But this company is a very, very market leader. And you should note guys, because of this, this company can be able to sustain this market and we are very, very positive on Susan Energy Limited. I mean, we were almost a medium level, I mean, we were thinking that, okay, it may be a one of the things, but after seeing what they have really given to this news, we are very, very positive. And we already said, guys, two important things, the share price has closed down negative today. But you must note a main point, guys. The main point is that the debt recessing process is going on and Susan Energy Limited has various branches across the globe. It is a global conglomerate, and this is what they have said, guys. And they have said that uh, they have the promoter has said that we are trying to in intensively working towards hostile debt resolution process with lender consortium. So, if this lender consortium process is going to get over very very soon, I think yes, mean I think the Susan Energy would be able to gain a beautiful future, guys. I think. Renewable resource energy would be would lead the future because as you know guys How much times they will uh, able to use the non-petroleum goods? I mean non-renewable energy goods, but if you see Already Suzuki Energy is having a strong order book. I showed you 4400 crores Suzuki Energy is also having the largest capacity 12.5 gigawatts they have installed and they are aiming for around 5 gigawatts extra and also you should note guys Susan Energy has submitted a resolution process to the lender consortium and the last date is that April 30, 2020 and which is going on if this process as a whole is going to be very very good then India's the largest renewable energy solutions provider would be a multi-bagger list to it. So guys uh, if you have a hope that within April 30, 2020 this lender consortium would be able to finish these queries and also accept the haircut. I think Susan Energy could be a multi-bagger one and only if this 
one and only if this lender consortium has helped this and Susan Energy could be able to move from it guys and this is about Susan Energy guys if you like this news and this see this video fully till now I hope you are liking our channel then why not click the subscribe button guys see you in the video very soon